discussion? What is this? Okay. Hindu madam. Good morning. Good morning. Namaskar. Oh, uh, and presenter sir, how do you know sir? And participant sir, how do you know sir? Yeah, sir. Abo start go no parla. Baro to thakhi bajaya sir. Sir, on mute, अपना टीम रोनी ऑन म्यूट कर रहा था। सायं तो। I'm on mute. I'm on mute. I'm on mute. I'm See what's around again, you know, sexy. Oh, no, wait, sir. See what's the logic for only to go on this number you request for it. See what's on Corbett, right? I saw no sign up. Okay, thank you. Participants, are you ready? Ready, you are ready. Yes, sir, we are ready. Pass, uh, I'll just sat here all this answer. When was I'm Ozzy Sharp. I'm not sure. So you only got me. I'm not sure. 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 
ما خیلی دوستش دیگاری در سان می توانیش نه؟ Welcome to the UPA Defense Virtual Seminar, a respected faculty of IES, member advisor committee, Siva Sankar Bhattarais, and Ajay Ratna Bajarajare from senior scientists from NARC, Entomology Division, and parallelly from exam section, and all the participants. And the topic of the two, uh, today's presentation is uh, efficacy test of chem chemical and bioarsenal pesticides against fall army womb, this product of Frugipeda under laboratory condition in Rupandi, Nepal. And the presenters are Deepesh Subedi, Gaurav Banjade, uh, Manila Laimishani, and Sapna Srist. And presenters, you can take your time. You have 15 minutes for presentation and five minutes uh, minute for discussion. Okay, you can take our session. Good luck. A very warm good afternoon to all. Respected advisor, uh, senior scientist Ajay Bajrajare sir, my seniors, juniors, my friends, and everyone present over here. Welcome you all in our presentation on undergraduate practicum assessment of entomology. The title of our research is Efficacy Test of Chemical and Biorational Pesticide Against Fall Armyworm, Spodoptera fujiparda, J. E. Smith, Lepidoptera noctude, under laboratory condition in Rupandahi, Nepal. Principal researchers are my friend, Mr. Dipesh Subedi, Mr. Gaurav Banjade, Ms. Manlala Misane, and myself, Sapna Shrestha. Advisory committee includes main advisor, assistant professor Deepak Khanal, member advisor, assistant professor Siva Sankar Bhattrai, Department of Horticulture and Plant Protection, Pakhliawa Campus, IAS. Here is the outline of our presentation. Introduction, rationale, objective, materials and methods, result and discussion, summary and conclusion, acknowledgement, references, and glimpse of research. Let's start our uh, presentation with introduction. 
Paul armyworm Spodoptera fusipeda is the devastating invasive species of maize, which is native to tropical and subtropical region of America. It is polyphagous pest, which host ranges exceeds 80 species. It has high potential to spread. Adults can travel up to 100 km in one night. There are two strains of Paul armyworm. Maize strain, also known as C strain, which dominantly feeds on maize, cotton, and sorghum. And rice strain, which is also called as R strain, feeds on rice and pasture grassland. It is the scientific classification, family Noctidae, genus Spodoptera, species Fujiparda, common name Palamiworm, and Nepali name American Fauzikira. As a lepidopterian pest, life cycle is completed in four stages. These egg, larva, pupa, and adult. Life cycle is completed in 30 days during summer, 60 days during spring, and 90 days during winter. Duration of life stage in summer season are egg stage two to three days, larva 14 to 19 days, pupa eight to nine days, and adult stage four to five days. The identifying characteristics of Paul armyworm is visible in third to six larva in a star, that is inverted Y mark on the head and four large pinacula spots in the shape of a square on the head segment. It can also be identified in adult stage. The male forewing has triangular white spot at the apical region and circular um, light brown spot in the center, whereas female has uniform grayish brown to mottling of gray and brown color. Hindwing of both male and female is silver with narrow dark border. Paul armyworm is the economic pest of maize. Excessive damage is caused by consumption of the foliage in the larval stage. Early larva, that is first to second in star, scrap the epidermal leaf tissue, causing the fresh papery window as shown in figure first. And in young larva, that is third to fourth in star, chew the leaves, causing the racked or windowed hole as shown in figure second. Later larva, that is 56th, move to wall, ear zone, and start feeding the growing point, tassels, silk, and cuffs in extreme condition. Different chemical and birational pesticides have been widely used as emergency response to slow the spread and damage. However, haphazard use of chemical pesticide builds up the residual effect, resistance in fall armyworm, and outbreak of secondary pest. That is why alternative effective methods like botanicals, biopesticide, IPM approach should be encouraged. Status of fall armyworm in world. Global invasion of fall armyworm is chronologically shown in the figure in the table below. It is the native species of South and North America. In 2016, it invades the Africa. In 2018, it invades the Asia, first in Karnataka, India. And in 2019, it arrives to Nepal. As I have already said, it has already arrived to Nepal. It is first reported in Naulpur district by NARC on 9th May 2019 and was confirmed on 12th August 2019 by NPPO, Plant Quarantine and Pesticide Management Center, after the lab report. After the invasion, it rapidly spreads to more than 18 districts of Nepal, excessively in hilly region. The 18 districts are listed below and also presented in the adjoining map. Rasnel. Maize being second staple crop of Nepal and first in hilly region is now under threat of this invasive pest. The farmer have reported up to 70% yield loss with varying incidence and damage. The occurrence of multiple generation, ability to migrate, ability to feed wide range of host plant makes fall armyworm most difficult pest to control. That is why effective management strategy are required to tackle the risk of fall armyworm pest to avoid the economic adversity in Nepal. Objective. Broad objective is to evaluate the efficiency of different biorational and chemical pesticide to develop the effective management strategy of fall armyworm in Nepal. A specific objective are the, to compare the effect of chemical and biorational against third instar of fall armyworm in lab condition to find out the potential pesticide for management of fall armyworm. Our literature review includes fall armyworm, classification of fall armyworm, status of fall armyworm in world and Nepal, status of maize in world and Nepal, biology of pest, economic importance, recommended chemical pesticide, recommended biorational pesticide.
Now, further presentation will be continued by my colleague, Manla Lamy Chane. Thank you. Excuse me, can you hear me or not? Sapna? Yes, continue. Thank you everyone for being here today. I'm here to present materials and method as well as result and discussion of our research. Let me start from the site of a collection and research. Rearing of, large, rearing of insect was done by collecting the egg mass of fall armyworm from National Maize Resource Program, Rampur Chiton. Here, this figure shows the site of a collection and research, which are National Meds Research Program and IS Pakihawa, respectively. Now, moving towards materials required. The materials required are thorin star larvae of fall armyworm, the treatments, that is chemical pesticide and bio-rational pesticides, sodium hypochlorite and molasses, maize leaves, microscope, heater, thermometer, thermohygrometer, box, distilled water, beaker, petri dish and weighing machine were used. Now moving towards larval rearing, under daily monitoring, the larvae were fed fresh leaves immediately after emergence. The leaves were collected from maize leaves under daily microscopic study of larval metamorphosis. The batch of larvae, when grown up to third in star, were separated in petri dish and used as sample. Separate petri dishes were used in order to avoid cannibalism. Now moving towards experimental setup, the laboratory condition of research was maintained at temperature 21.6 to 25.5 degrees centigrade and relative humidity at 49 to 58 percent with a photo period of 12 hours light. Research was carried out in completely randomized design and six treatments were made for both chemical and biorational pesticide with four replication each. Here, I would like you all to focus on this figure. This figure shows the laboratory setup of our research. As I already mentioned, our treatments were divided into two parts, chemical pesticide and biorational pesticide. That's why our laboratory setup was also divided into two parts, one for chemical pesticide and another for biological biorational pesticide, which consists of four replication for each treatment. Here, in the right-hand side, you see the Detailed view of each replication, which consists of six treatment, along with 10 number of larvae in each treatment. And each larva was fed with 0.3 gram of maize leaves, which makes up an average of 30 gram of maize leaves for each treatment and 120 gram of maize leaves for each replication. Moving to our next slide, I would like to all you focus in this table. This table shows the name of treatment along with their dose. As I already mentioned, our treatments were divided into chemical pesticide and biorational pesticide. Here, the treatments under chemical pesticide are spinosad first treatment, T2 spinotorem, T3 chloramtrinopol, T4 imamectic benzoate, T5 chloropyrifos, and T6 control, which is distilled water. Under biorational pesticides, T1 bacillus thuringiensis, T2 metarhizum anisopeli, T3 buveria brassiana, T4 neem, T5 clove oil, and T6 control, that is distilled water. The trend name and active ingredients of each treatment is also given in the table. Now moving towards treatment preparation. Sodium hypochlorite one portion was used as leaf surface sterilizer. Then the leaves were rinsed by distilled water. After the treatment was prepared according to the recommended dose in the beaker and still trolling. One gram of molasses was used in one liter solution preparation of Bt, buberia, and metarhizum. Leaf dip method was used to treat the leaves. Leaves were dipped in the solution for 10 minutes and air dried for removing the excess moisture. Feeding was done in every 24 hours after treatment. Now moving towards data collection, Data on the mortality of larvae were taken in every six hours for five consecutive days in case of chemical pesticide and on every 12 hours in case of biorational pesticide. Let me repeat this once again. The data of mortality of larvae were taken on every six hours for five consecutive days in case of chemical pesticide and on every 12 hours in case of biorational pesticide. The treatment and relative 
The temperature and relative humidity was noted in every six hours. The larvae were considered dead if they could not move when coated with fine paintbrush. All right, moving towards statistical analysis, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint was used for data entry and presentation respectively. The percent larval mortality was transformed using art sign transformation. Mean percent larval mortality of fall armyworm larvae obtained from chemical and biorational pesticides were subjected to one way ANOVA and Duncan's multiple range test using R Studio version 4.0.0 at 5% level of significance. With this, I would like to move to our result and discussion of our chemical pesticides. Here, this figure shows the variation of temperature during lab test, which is the maximum temperature was noted up to 25.5 degrees centigrade, while the minimum temperature was noted at 21.6 degrees centigrade, which makes up an average temperature of 23.6 degrees centigrade during our lab test. Now moving towards another figure, this figure shows the variation of relative humidity during our lab test, where the maximum relative humidity was noted at 58%, while the minimum relative humidity at 49%, which makes up an average relative humidity of 52.4%. All right, I would like you all to focus on this table precisely. This table shows the mean percentage of cumulative mortality of fall armyworm larvae, of six hours, 12 hours, 18 hours, and 24 hours after application of chemical pesticide in laboratory condition. Here, LST means this significant difference, CV means coefficient of variation, and the GF means degree of freedom, while the asterisk shows the level of significance. Two alphabetical notations denote the significant difference between respective means, while the column represented by same letters are not significantly different among each other. There is significant difference among the synthetic chemical insecticides causing mortality to larvae at six hours, 12 hours, 18 hours, as well as 24 hours after treatment. I would like you all to focus on the column of data showing the six hours. For first six hours after treatment, delicate T2 caused 90% mortality, followed by spinosite T1, 87.50%, imamectic benzoate T4, 65%, along with chloropyrifos T5, 17%, and chloramprinopol T3, 15%. Spinotorum was found to be highly toxic, corroborated to a hard K, ETAL 2010. Similar trend was seen 12 hours after treatment with chloropyrifos T5, 30%, being more effective than chloramprinopol T3, 15%. Now, 18 hours after treatment, delegate spinotorum, our second treatment seemed to be most effective with 100% mortality, followed by spinosad T1, 97.5%, and imamectic benzoate T4, that is 95%, along with chloropyrifos T5, 42%, and chloramprinopol T3 being least effective with 20%. After 24 hours, delegate T2 and spinosad T1 RS, highest efficacy at 100%, followed by imamectic benzoate, T4, 97.4%, and chloropyrifos, 55.0%, along with least effective chloramtrinopol, 32.5%. I would like you all to again focus in this table. This table shows the mean percentage of cumulative mortality of fall armyworm larvae of 30 hours, 36 hours, 42 hours, and 48 hours after application of our treatments. There is significant difference between the synthetic chemical pesticides causing larval mortality in second day, being 30 hours, 36 hours, 42 hours, and 48 hours too. Delegate our second treatment and tracer our first treatment being at 100% efficacy since 18 and 24 hours respectively. Siddhartha ETL 2019 also reported that spinosad is highly effective pesticide within the first 36 hours of observation. However, imamectic benzoate T4 caused higher mortality, that is 97.47% mortality in 30th hour and reached up to 100% in 36th hour. Chloropyrifos, our fifth treatment, is still in the second last position with 60% mortality in 30 hours and 75% mortality within 48 hours. Now moving to us to chloramprinopol. Chloramprinopol, our third treatment, has lowest mortality with 42% within 30 hours and 60% within 48 hours. 
Now moving towards the third uh, next table, I would like to you all to focus in this table too. This table shows the mean percentage of cumulative mortality of all armyum larvae of 54 hours, 60 hours, 66 hours, and 72 hours after application of chemical pesticide in laboratory condition. Here, there is significant difference between the mortality caused by different chemical pesticides in 54 hours, 60 hours, 66 hours, and 72 hours after treatment. Along with tracer, our first treatment, delegate second treatment, and imamectic benzoate, our fourth treatment. The chemical pesticide, chloropyrifos, our fifth treatment, also came up with 100% mortality since 66 hours after treatment. Chloramprinopole T3 is still at the lowest efficient position and its mortality has reached 85.5% within 72 hours after treatment. With this, I have come up with the end of my portion. I would like to request my colleague Deepesh Suvedi to continue further with the result and discussion of session of biological pesticide. Thank you. Thank you, Monila. I am here to present the result and discussion of the biological pesticides. Now moving towards the table. Here, this table shows the mean percentage of cumulative mortality of falamium larva of 12, 24, 36, and 48 hours after the application of biorational pesticides. Here, there is significant difference between biorational pesticides in causing mortality to the larva in the first two days. That is 12, 24, 36, and 48 hours after treatment. In this table, we can see that Clovoil T5 is found to be most effective among all the pesticides, causing 62.5% mortality in first 12 hours. 87.5% in 36 hours and reaching up to 95% mortality in 48 hours after treatment. And after 12 hours of treatment, neem is most effective at 15% mortality after the global, which is followed by Buberia with 10%, Bt with 7%, and Metarhizium with 0% mortality. And after 24 hours of treatment, Bt has the highest mortality of 20% after global, which is followed by neem with 17.5% and Buberia with 12.5%. And here, while 36 hours after treatment, BT, NIM, and BVADA have same mortality, that is 22.5%, and metallism has less mortality with 15%. And also, after 48 hours of treatment, NIM and BVADA are most effective after global with 32.5% mortality, and metallism and BT have least mortality with 22.5%. Now, moving towards the next, next slide. Here, in this table, it's shown the mean percentage of cumulative mortality of falagium larva of 72, 96, 120, and 144 hours after the treatments. Here, in this table, there is significant difference between by rational pesticides in causing the mortality to larva in the next four days. That is 72, 96, 120, and 144 hours after treatment. Here, the efficacy of global treatment number five has this 100% in 72 hours after treatment. And the second most effective pesticide seems to be Buberia with 92.5% mortality after 144 hours. Here, Bt is in third position with 75% mortality in 144 hours. And neem and metallism are least effective, causing 60% and 67.5% mortality at 144 hours after treatment. Now, moving to the next slide. Here, this table also shows the mean percentage of cumulative mortality of falarium larva of 168 hours and 192 hours after the application of the treatments. Here, this table also shows the significant difference between the biorational pesticides in causing the mortality to the larva in 168 hours and 192 hours after treatment. Here, Buberia has this 95% mortality by day, which is followed by Bt, which have 82.5% mortality after day. Here, metallism and neem has 77.5% and 75% mortality, respectively, by day. Now, moving to the next slide. Here is a line graph that shows the relation of gram mortality percentage caused by chemical and biorational pesticides. Here, the line graph clearly shows that chemical pesticide is highly effective against polyamium than biorational pesticide in terms of mortality. Here, 60% mortality was observed in 24 hours in chemical pesticide, whereas 120 hours was required by biorational pesticides. Now, moving to the next slide. 
Now we have some of the conclusion. Our research was carried out to test the efficacy of chemical and biorational pesticides for the effective management of thalamium. It was conducted with two treatments. Six is for chemical and biorational pesticides. The third instar larva were fed with maize leaves treated with recommended dose of chemical and biorational pesticides at laboratory condition at an average temperature 23.6 degrees centigrade and relative humidity of 52.4 percent. The research shows the all the effects of chemical and biorational pesticides are highly significant over control. Here, among the biorational pesticides, maximum mortality was observed in Clovel, 100 percent, in 72 hours, that is third day of treatment, which, is, which was followed by Bivaria, 50 percent, on the third day of the treatment. Here, neem and metallism were found to be least effective, with just 77.5 percent and 75 percent mortality respectively in eight day after treatment. Now, next slide. Here, among the chemical pesticides, maximum mortality was observed in spinotherium, along with spinosad and imamectic benzoid, in the first 24 hours after treatment. Here, the least effective chemical was chloram trinable with 100% mortality after 114 hours, that is fifth day of treatment. So from this result, we can conclude that the most effective bioresonal pesticides are Clobel and Vivaria bassiana, whereas the most effective chemical pesticides are spinotherium, spinosad, and imamectic benzoid. In terms of mortality of third instead of following lava in laboratory conditions. Now, next slide. And from our research, we can recommend that our recommendations are the effective chemical pesticides and bio rational pesticides from our research can be recommended for the further study and for the effective management strategy of polarium. The effect of global is similar to chemical pesticides, therefore, it is recommended to use as a substitute of hazardous chemical pesticides. We also recommend the further field work, which will complement these laboratory studies for the validation of different lab states in addition to different time and reason to determine the most effective chemical. At last, we recommend the IPM approach, including effective chemical and biorational pesticides from our research, which are effective, sustainable, environment friendly, and economical to the farmers for the management of polarium. Always made. We express our special thanks to Assistant Professor Deepak Khanal sir, Member Advisor Assistant Professor Siva Sankar Bhattrai, Professor Dr. Kanaya Prasad Singh Campus Chief for providing all facilities for our research, as Senior Scientist Ajay Sri Bajrajari, NARC, Senior Scientist Sarsuti Neopani and Ganacham Bandari NMRP for information and guidance, Mr. Gopal Giri and Mr. Dhan Bahadur Rana of Agronomy and Entomology Lab for their continuous help, our senior Mr. Damodar Gautam, Technical Officer of NMRP to set up the administrative schedule for a collection from NMRP. Finally, to all juniors, seniors and our beloved friend for their help and support. Here is our references and the glimpse of our research. It is the preparation of box. It is the collection of egg from National Maze Research Program. Rearing the larva to third in star. First picture egg, second egg in the petri dish. Third, due to lack of humidity, egg was placed in petri dish with wet filter paper. And finally, third larva in star. Observation of egg and larva under microscope. Cluster of egg, initial white egg, black egg at the time of hatching, and second in star larva. Preparation of treatment. Here is experimental setup and data collection. Mortality of larva after infestation. And here we wrap up by cleaning and drying petri dish and destroying larva and egg for the biosecurity in Rupandahi district. And here are other photos. Thank you for your attention. <coughs> Okay, thank you very much and congratulations for the very nice presentation. And this virtual floor is open for discussion. Uh, you can ask questions, you can suggest anything you like. Okay, key say suggestions or question or or comments or as a participant. I 
Finesse. Gaurav Lai, unmute Gaurav Lai, Gaurav Lai. Unmute Gaurav Lai, and Ajay Sarlai, unmute Gaurav Lai. Gaurav Lai, Gaurav Lai, Gaurav Lai. 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 Uh, ready for a bag in a hard copy present on Punicura, presentation on Nicuraru, or yes, no Babu Tikura, Sajish Goran Sara, Lakish Havanese, Azuka for the key, Sajish and Sasa, comment or queries. Murkasi is to the Senate, I am the Gamgono Varaja, I know. Just the BC by Unity, Piricam Gorno, it is Gorno, Neta, Pocket and Amro. मतलब अलग तो जिया सा लाए को जस्ट तो वहाँ ले थर्ड इंस्टार मतलब इस गर्म बनो वो है ना थर्ड इंस्टार चाहिए नहीं क्यों को आधार में थर्ड इंस्टार में ले कॉन्फर्म बनो वो है ना लाए वहाँ में थोड़ा चाहिए नहीं बस नहीं जनरली यहाँ मिली क्या गर्म सोम बंदा करी कंटिन्यूस मोनिटरिंग गर्म � पहल कहीं कॉस्ट होने से बंद आएगी ये वाले दिन में इसके कुल लार बार पुनी कुने सेकंड इंस्टार वही रहा हमसे कुने थर्ड इंस्टार वही रहा हमसे जो वही रहा हमसे तो क्या के ड्यूरेशन मिल रहा हूँ दही ना कि तो इंस्टार चेंज होना लाये तेरे गाता के लिए जेनी कॉन्फर्म होना लाये आमिले ये कैप्सूल मेज धेरी धेरी देखा होना बहुत है ना ये फैलू तो कि वो मतलब इतने बुजी ना कि ये फालू क्यों होने रहे कि कुंजे ही फैलू आलू हो वने रहा आह अब एनालिसिस करता कि ये फैलू जाए नहीं 0.05 बंदा कम आए होने 5 परसेंट प्रायोरिटी में सिग्निफिकेंट बहु है ना 0.001 बंदा कम बहु वने दूसरा एस्टी � इमाम मेक्टिक बेंजोइट लिखने वाले हैं जहाँ इमाम मेक्टिन बेंजोइट हो ये ना मेक्टिक जाइए वही ना ठाउं ठाउं में इमाम मेक्टिक लिखने को देखने देखिए ये अने आर को जाइए ना वाला जनता भर को प्लोरोन ट्रेनिलो प्लोर सिग्निफिकेंट आए ना ये ना अब ये लाइ अलग दिक कसरी ये ने जैसे कि प्लोरोन ट्रेनिल धेरे ठाउँ में गरीब को रिसर्च में क्लोरोन ट्रेंड पर एकदम ही इफेक्टिव था कि तब वाले कुने ही कस्टो ने केमिकल लाया होता कि कुन कंपनी को लाया उन्होंने बायो है ना पहले कहते कंपनी ले बनो ना तेल गार्ड आखिर इतने अलग अलग असर था नहीं पार था पार था ही पार था है ना तो क्लोरोन ट्रेंड पर इफेक्टिव ना ह उनसे की बनने को रहेगा जाइए और उधर सब पे राम रचा ओके प्रेसिडेंटर्स सर लेसे बने को रहेगा बुझ रहे हो वाला तब वाले लेसे में जिस थर्ड इंस्टार कॉन्फ्रेंसिंग का सरगर्म बहुत है शायद सर लेसे बने के प्रोसेस क्यों वाला है ना एंड क्यों से ये वैल्यू रहे क्यों बने को चीज़ जो एनोबा एन एनो भाई को या फैलो हो सर आप पी फैलो से 0.05 मामले से इसमें पी फैलो से आजू बाजू बने को से इसमें पी फैलो तेला छुट्टे रहा है कुछ अपन इस्टेट इस्टेट लेने तेला ही कुछ ऐसा है ना तो या फैलो से एनो भाई का रहा है फैलो तो सब चीजें करने के साथ एनो भाई का आलू भाई का तो सही � नो प्रोल को लागी ऑन कोरा 18.5 परसेंट ऐसे यूज़ करने को थे हम सर ऑन कोरा अन्य अम्ले लार थर्ड लार बा स्टार से 1.5 सेंटीमीटर लार बा बॉय पची थर्ड इंस्टार लार बा ओ बने पची तो यूज़ है अम्ले यूज़ करने को सर अन्य तो यो लाइक तो अबे लोग को वैलिडेशन सिक्की करने को रे बने अब 
लिटरेचर सायद सर्च कर कुलर एमटेनेबल फिल्ड में इफेक्टिव सो हम अलमोस्ट टप फाइव पेस्टी साइड फलर में रिकमेंड कर इमिडिएट लकडाउन इफेक्ट को इफेक्टिव भाई